Bang has gone right in there with his champion already. Oh, well, speaking of him, we should just tag along straight with uh, with the hang then on, on Strahd. He actually doesn't have Peeker anymore, but he pushes through the teleporter, gets one kill. But we should talk about the strengths of, of Strahd and Peeker. I mean, the fact that you can kind of dive bomb with Peeker, get an initial 100 damage, then follow it up with a rocket or follow it up with LG to finish someone off is extremely important. Oh, he's, he's stuck! stuck. All right, for, P him. for the hang. Well, <laughs> even Rafa's like, wait, where, where'd you die? What are you doing? But actually with him dying, it kind of gives Rafa some more rockets to use for this position. He steals away Mega and maintains control of the position that Kuro and Latromi always like to hold. Now, actually, I think we should probably talk a, t a tiny bit about Strogan Pika. I know this is finals day, but there's possibility of some of these new players watching the stream not really knowing what the new champion is. This is the brand new champion in Quake Champions. And long story short, Strog and Pika. Uh, Strog creates a, uh, basically a sentry turret, and that's going to be Pika can fly around the map. He himself will be cloaked, but still vulnerable. And Pika can both shoot to do damage, or right here, you can dive bomb. And the dive bomb does 100 damage on direct, or if it splashes, it does damage too. The reason you see it on a map like this is because to hang uses Pika to cover those corners as a guaranteed projectile or as a means to get damage that AMD will not be able to answer back because you have to shoot Pika to take it out. Not to mention, like uh, I think you know, Dehang and Rafa talked about this, the, the healing you can get. Like if you on if you on average get like 20 kills, that's 500 health if I can do my math correctly. It's 20 times 25. Yeah, I'm not even gonna try to be honest on the fly, but I believe 20 you. times. 25 times 10 is 250, double S, yeah, so 500. So you get 500 health. And Dehang has been constantly putting up numbers of 30s, 30 frags. So you can expect him to get so much healing back. That pair of Galena, you can never truly understand how much HP they're currently at, even with the damage you are doing to them. Pair that up with the fact that you can, you know, or that Peeker has protection, and that armor is basically doubled in value when it comes to protection for Dehang. It makes him so hard to deal with again. And, and the damage big, done. That's 72, I believe damage. that was. Really big damage in that exchange. It wasn't enough, unfortunately. So AMD were able to take the power up anyway. Um, but you can see right there, he had LG good to go. And Pika kind of really set up that damage. Uh, I think we're going to see that a lot more throughout the course of this map. But for now, it uh, didn't quite work out. Cooler very weak himself. Rafa is absolutely going to point out how weak Cooler currently is at this point in time. And uh, just one last note on Strog, actually. Uh, you were talking about the healing. For those that may be wondering what Kaplan's talking about, that's because Pete, uh, sorry, Strog's passive, he drops health when he gets a frag. Uh, the enemy that he frags will drop a health vial. He picks it up, only he can pick it up, and it gives him a little bit of health back. Rafa comes through with a nice double kill. Actually, as he does die too from the nail and the hang, he's gonna be able to, be able to pick up Mega. He does have Peeker, Ooh. but he's not gonna use it just yet. Still very low on HP. He can actually use it to help out Rafa here, and yes, he does exactly that. That's gonna be 100 damage now done. Rafa should ideally be able to finish off that kill as he pushes in towards Nails, but the hang's gonna fall. Rafa's still healthy enough to take Cooler down if he wants to. And there I, you yeah, go. That's that's that, I actually one. surprised Cooler chased that with the stack that he had available to. I'm assuming the Trimmy must have coordinated that Rafa was weak. Cooler probably fancied his luck in that one versus one, but it didn't work. And Cooler able to secure one more. Only a small difference between these two teams. To hang moments away from having Pika again. Hopefully for, for them, they're going to have it up for protection too. Seem just healing up really quickly. Inside nail room is going to be pushed from the high ground. Cooler will get the kill. We now 20 seconds left to go. He's going to respawn in with full HP. Well, not full HP technically. 125 HP. Trying to get that full natural stack. And there's Pika off to the side, just flying by as the hang will fall. But it's going to come down to the protection. That death's fine. It's not a big deal. They're still maintaining a three kill lead. Now, using uh, Pika now, that obviously means that the Hang's not going to be able to use it to fight for this power up, but it's not necessary, but it makes life a lot easier. And the Trumi with the defense. I love the position he pulled up there to make the LG a little bit harder to hit. And then combine that with the Totem, it's just an extra stack. The Hang did get the jump, but couldn't get the accuracy on the pummel. So no damage was dealt. That sucks. If only the, the Gauntlet was on his feet. I know, right? If he was wearing them as shoes. Yeah, he would have shredded through. And the Mega's gonna spawn in. Cooler actually pushes away from it. He's lowish on HP. And I think Latromi was the one to actually secure the Mega since Rafa was on his way. Cooler 13 health now. They're constantly getting Cooler low. I mean, they're at least preventing the amount of damage Cooler can technically do with these, these power-ups. But they're still getting power-ups. And they're still getting kills off them no matter what. And now finally AMD do have the lead by three frags. Inside of, oh, this combination right there. Rafa just, just really hungry for that frag, but as it's scrubbed and keep, you've got to watch out for those totems. Rafa was just prepared to take that risk, I think. He wouldn't have run through it otherwise. Nice little totem to heal up with, too. And I think someone just took 100 come through the teleporter, thinking they're going to be able to pincer move on them. Rafa getting one kill into Latromi. And, you know, speaking of kills, currently 14 for Cooler. Latromi having a, a slower game at 8. But Cooler is 
He's not been shy of carrying. Hey, he's, he's also got four ticks. He had both power-ups the same, you know, too. So I don't want to like, say he's, he's going crazy at the moment, but he's definitely playing well. Cooler did have an absolute rampage of a day yesterday. I think the important thing this stage in the tournament really is being able to maintain that momentum. So we see the uh, controlling the middle of this room and got the keep of the utmost importance. And that's what ultimately what it comes down to. Uh, the fact there's no rail on this map for those that didn't know. Uh, so the power weapons really are going to be Rocket and LG. And it kind of, the fact that there is one less of the golden trio of weapons really emphasizes the importance of the other two. And because the LG has Mega, it has a great angle towards both the rocket launcher and the power-up. If you hold this room and you're Galena, you have the ultimate advantage here. The downside, though, no. I, I'd have to say for if you're AMD, if you're holding this room, is that Rafa can get four totems set up just like this. Power-up's about to come in. They have so many points they can retreat to to heal with. And speaking of power-up, let's actually head into Liquid Comms to hear how they approach this. Going to quad. She's 70 it's at two. It's at two. Pink. Yes. There's a to another totem at LG for you. Getting it, getting it. I'm holding rocket right now. Okay. You're mega. Cooler halls. Okay. Pushing rocket. I'm going to go to red in a sec. He, he's healthy. He's like 130. All right. You're on your own. Yep. I'll meet you bridge. Don't point. I already did. We're good. Visor rocket weak. Got him. Jump. I'm porting. Mega's Big like 45. Nail. Now, there's one thing you can hear there. It is the intensity of those group comms. Like, you know, I actually like the volume from Rafa because it's allowing to make sure that no call in the heat of the action is going to be missed because the volume is really sort of speaking for itself. Very intense communication from these guys. Sounds so stressed to me. I don't know why. It seems like AJ really giving them a run for their money in this match, even though they are up six frags. Zatromi is able to turn that around with the kill himself quickly just to check in. 17 for Tehang, 14 for Rafa, 15 for Cooler, 11 for Latromi. Get to hang. He has dropped down. Nice rocket, actually, to push Matomi away. And Rafa is still with three totems. This is insane. Like, the thing is, on Clip to Keep is such a small map that you go to pretty much every area. It's crazy to see this able to get three totems down. Now, I'm going to assume that we didn't see actually Cooler take damage from those totems because on that, right off the spawn, that 100 damage peaker is a best case scenario for the hang. Um, I think I want to go back to that the, the quad rampage we just saw when we were listening to their comms. You can actually hear how much, I think, uh, confidence and trust that Hank has in every call that Rafa was making. He was getting the rampage with the quad damage, but it was because of the coordination and what Rafa was telling Dehang to do, and Dehang 100% trusted his judgment there. Oh, that focus fire is disgusting. So he picks up Mega, and he gets the vial after that. Puts about 200 HP. Dehang is a monster, and he's going to have heavy. He's going to be so formidable, especially Another for power up coming up right now. He's got Peeker available. He's going to charge straight in. The LG just shreds through him, though. Cooler doing a fantastic job. Rafa's nowhere to be seen to help out for this one. And that's going to be Cooler with the protection. Again, low HP, though. Every time they get protect or get a power-up, they don't have the ability to push off of that to make plays. It's unfortunate that with that stack that the hang was looking at, he sort of very, very confidently went in full speed head. Oh no, Pika. That does mean Dehang's going to be temporarily vulnerable. When you're using Pika, you cannot fight back. Dehang got caught slipping a little bit. And it is actually allowing AMD to kind of start to climb back. One more rocket might do the job. Being a little bit more patient with the rocket shot. Almost waiting a little bit too long, I think. And that is going to cost him his life. Kind of uncharacteristic of AMD, though. They've not really forced control around the statue. They've given up for the most part. I think, in general, um, Liquid have had more totems down longer at the teleporter uh, at Mega. So kind of changing up their style to deal with Liquid, and that kind of goes to what we talked about before the game started. Cooler adapting his style to the team he is against. And obviously he knows Rafa just like the back of his hand. Pinker comes out again. I think the totem actually blocked that one. I definitely think it did. Uh, we heard no no sound effect, no damage numbers. Using the totem, because the totem has that kind of like almost like immunity the second you summon it, these high level players will use the totem to almost soak up a projectile. And Pika is one big fat projectile. He's just big meddled. All right, it's not his fault. He screams when he flies at you. That's <laughs> the scariest thing. All right, that's going to be cool taking away heavy. 30 seconds to a quad. This game is still not decided by any means. No, 40 not. to 36, 10 minutes in, still very frag heavy. But I think this quad's almost going to decide who wins the map. So teams need to get set up, need to get prepared for this. Again, Liquid have control around the statue. The hang's going to fall, actually suicide, on, uh, unfortunately. 
Yeah, that, that's that's a bad news for Liquid because it means that now the divide of frags is so oh. minimal. But that's good knowledge for Rafa. He's going to know they're weak and they're pushed away from Quad. Can't give up too much control there in the LG room because I did hear a Pika. I wonder if we were able to see any damage from the hang. He is nice and stacked, but he's going to get completely melted and it's 8 2 for nothing. AMD are going to take the lead off this power up. The question is, is the power up enough to secure the map? Oh, that respawn out of oh, Rafa. No. The Tromi catches him two times now. That's actually going to give them the two frag lead. Constantly going back and forth in this match. Oh, Rafa no! drops straight into a totem. That one hurt. That one hurt a lot. 400 damage. Outright unanswered for. And the Tromi, they've been able to funnel it as well. Pika, I mean, he tries to fight back, but even if Pika connected, Dahang wouldn't have got the frag there. Oh, they get locked in. Look at that. That was a huge swing of kills. Four frag lead now. The Tromi even get another one to Rafa. Gets caught out. Rafa, though, getting the better of him with the nail gun. They're trying to reset up a totem at this position. 43-40. And AMD are on the verge of taking this first map in the series. This is a best of five. This is a semi-finals. But I really, truly felt like this would have been Team Liquid's map. Um, I feel like they, they have such unique results on this map because of this strong Pika. I know champions don't always make a huge difference My. on this map. It has done throughout the course of this tournament. Four HP. He's got to wait for a totem. This is so close, Jason. I can't watch. Three frags. Well, well, please continue to watch because I need you to cast this with me here. <laughs> Rafa's trying to get his cooldown back up again. 40 seconds on search protection. Mega will be secured, though, for the side of AMD. That's going to be Latromi getting it. And Latromi is having a decent game so far. Not kind of like what we saw before, but they're also beating Liquid at the moment. So you can't really, you know, rag on anyone on the side of AMD. That's like a good juggle into the hang. He's so low. He gets knocked off oh by his own God. rocket. And Latromi, sprightly enough, not going to chase it. He's going to back away. They realize this protection can win the game now for AMD. We have only just actually seen one extra frag. That was almost a full minute without anything returned. It's going to be 1-1. If AMD have the lead, though, those 1-1s are going to work out for them. Seven seconds on protection. Cool, has 3 HP. He can't go for this. Latromi, it's going to come down to him. So we're going to watch his point of view here. He gets the totem down. Oh. They kill Pika. Rafa drops. And Dehang gets the second kill. Rafa now with protection. Two kills behind. He's got rockets. He's looking for the respawns. And I think Dehang just gave him the information. He's on the chase. He's on the hunt. He wants some kills. And they're definitely going to need it just to tie things up. They need to make this protection do something. I think AMD are going to be super happy trying to sort of run rings around these guys. They are going to be funneling into LG Rum. They have walked right into Rafa. Dehang's going to head off. They might actually try and. No, they're, 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 no fight. We will just run away. Don't give him a single frag, but I think he's going to get two anyway. He tries to rocket jump. He's alive, but for how long? Zahang finishes the job there, and it's tied up. Three frags apiece for winning this first map. Rafa, not extremely healthy, but he's got a lot of armor to use. So the Tromi cooler, though, with the respawn. They need to get some weapons back. The Tromi on the high ground trying to fight Zahang. <gasps> that's going to be Rafa coming in from the side. They pick up another frag. They take the lead back. Zahang gets a second. Now one frag away. AMD. You have to be so careful about every frag that comes your way. Rafa Co is stacked. That's the thing to look at here. He is so healthy. A 2v1 is more than likely, and it's going to be good enough. They made a sweat for a little bit, but ultimately Team Liquid do take Corrupted Key. They had to work for that one, Jason. So at 49, was it 50, 47, or 50, 40? Yes, 50, 47. Cooler at 28 frags, Latromi at 19, and Dehang and Rathus splitting it down the middle at 25 apiece. Insane match. And if that's just a, an inkling of how the series is going to go, it's going to be probably one of the best series of the day. I, It feels a bit foreshadowing to me. It really feels like, you know, we could see every map go down to that. Uh, yeah. First things first, we've seen teams... Um, I think the obvious thing is that we've seen teams throughout the course of this tournament not have an answer for Strog. But it's, it's been, I think, ultimately, I think having awareness for Strog is being ready for Pika and being ready to shoot that sort of elephant in the room, basically. Um, but every time, we, we actually saw minimal use from Pika in that because every time the Tremi or Caller would hear it or see it, mm. they just get that guaranteed trail of LG and eliminate the problem before it's even there. I think that the well, use of Strog came from the health more than anything else. We, we actually, I think I think it was you and I theory, or that you kind of theorized about Strog on this map is that Pika, he's even stronger because there's no rail. So shotgun and rockets are the only really guaranteed way you can kill it. Uh, maybe even tribal, kind of. It's really hard to obviously hit that. Um, but rail gives you that extra weapon that you could potentially have to kill it instantly so you don't take the 100 damage. So I think that's why we see you know, a hell of a lot of Strog on that map. We're going into Blood Run. Originally, I think that was the map we first saw them running it on, Team Liquid, but they haven't in this tournament run Strog there. Um, but I don't think we're going to see it again. Yeah, I don't, I don't, at least on this map. I don't the think only two it. maps we ever see that get picked was Awoken and 
Crab's Keep. Yeah. So, you know, Awoken is all the way down on the end of map five. So, to be honest with you, if, if there is one series of the day, I think we're likely to see that. It's probably going to be this one. This could very well be a final map. Purely because of how evenly matched these two teams are. Yeah. But even though ultimately AMD didn't actually get that win, I'm still really impressed they made it that far. Because that seems to be Team Liquid 1's map. Yeah. No, no, 100%. Like, Latromi, he wasn't playing as well, at least in terms of frags that we saw before, but the quad run he had was so important in that map that it actually gave um, that map such a close finish. If they didn't have that quad and pick up, I think it was like five frags, that would have been Liquid's map, hands down. All right, so we're loading into Blood Run. We are moments away from uh, going into this. Now, I'm actually really, really curious to see how this map is going to go. I feel like the, the nature of how these guys like to both approach, uh, both Rafa and Cooler, two players that are not shy of playing at a slow pace. We know that AMD love playing 2v2 at a slow pace and really forcing the other team to play around their own, you know, their speed, as it were. But here we go, watching Liquid first. Rafa on the spectator. And a, a quick, swift double kill right there. Oh, 11 health too. The attention of Latromi got turned whenever Rafa came in from behind. He's going to sit in this blood pool for a little bit of time just to heal back up. No totem. Actually, it's to hang on Galena, by the way. So that, that's something I think you and I pointed out yesterday is that I guess on this map in particular, they actually swap the champions they play. Tipping against Rafa on the Galena, like we just saw in Corrupt to keep. This is typical of Liquid, um, to make sure that it's not oh, really a wow. role they play. It's they all they can make sure that Rafa and Hang make sure they can play the same champions as each other. And if the map calls for it, they'll play, you know, to their own strengths. If they feel like, you know, if Rafa feels like his visor is gonna be stronger on this map, then he'll go that, you know. But they've both got what it takes to play Galena, for example. It's 2v2. You gotta learn how to play this champion if you're gonna play this game mode. But they can alternate and they're not afraid to do so. Yeah, they've got a very good overlap in uh, in pools between the two, which is which makes them even stronger when it comes to who's gonna be, you know, good in the meta and how powerful they can be together. To hang in yeah, juggle in the air, Latromi will get the kill. So far Latromi with five frags, so there we go. He's on a bit of a rampage right now. Start off this first map, they trade it for another time. Rafa gets another frag. Yeah, it's been only just hit the minute and a half mark, and look how many frags we have already. Yeah, that's... I can't even count that high, based on air. Looks <laughs> <laughs> trying to come in to contest Mega, and DeHang will pick it up as well as his totem, so he'll be very healthy. And Rafa off to the side. Potentially going to set up. Remember, actually, I think Rafa in the interview said about 15 seconds, 15 to 10 seconds is where you want to set up for the room for Secret to pick up the power-up. Hang's already going to be there. I don't think he has any totems down here, though, unfortunately. Rafa, though, going to get the two-on-one. Kula comes in from behind. Kula looking for the kill into Rafa. And Hang is not able to hit these rockets. Oh, that hitter would have been perfect. But it doesn't matter. They get the kills nonetheless. And Rafa will finally have a chance here with quads to make something happen. And there's a rail. Yeah, good awareness on that respawn. Latromi, very limited as to what you can do. They're going to be funneling them back to power up for him. And with that note, Rafa is going to tell to hang exactly where the competition lies. They would have had the teleporter, I think. So they're going to try and set up shop. But it doesn't matter. I think well, Rafa just runs in and just gets these frags easily. Kind of surprised that AMD tried to almost defend in that room because if there's a quad rocket. You can't really dodge in this small, like, close quarters yeah, environment. But they're also spread out in a way that if he came in the room, then they could have focus fired him down at the same time. I agree. Like, remember we saw the. the the cyber fight match versus oh, Corbidae did. here, and exactly where Rafa's standing. Um, just gotta make sure to spread out so you don't get hit too much by splash damage. But AMD, no, they lost about, I mean, technically they lost four over the course of the quad, but we know how much, sorry, it was five, but we know how much Rafa could have potentially picked up if they didn't stick together and hide. I really like these 2v1s that Rafa's able to pick because he knows that he's done enough damage that one more rocket will at least get the trade situation. So he gets one frag, and before he goes down, either he secures a frag or to hang, you know, manages to, to clean up. And we talked to Rafa yesterday. He specifically mentioned that he's never he's never really too fussed if he dies unless it's really, really significant. Um, as long as it either sets up for more frags or if him dying allows the strategy of how they're going to approach 2v2 to get them the win. You know, it's not about your death count. It's about the W at the end of the day. Exactly. Oh, that's a big time of the trauma. He gets locked completely in the room. Oh, and he survived somehow. Yeah, he does. Health he gets bubble. locked into the bubble. <laughs> that was like actually really, uh, really helpful for him as he turns it into a one-on-one. -on -one. Cheers, mate. 20 seconds to go on protection. Heavy's up in three. Dehang is in a position to potentially take it. He's definitely got the weaponry for it, but the shotgun out of Latromi just absolutely decimates him. And now, I think actually Rafa, was Rafa the one to get a heavy? No, it was Cooler who actually got heavy. Now they're gonna push in for a two on two. They're gonna do what they can. Another two for nothing towards this room. They might get maybe one more fight, but they're just gonna go for that nail gun spam. He knows he can get more ammo. 
collects the protection at the last possible minute. To hang goes down, and Rafa took a truckload of damage. Show me now with the power up instead. Oh, that totem so clutch coming in. Is that able to hit the shots? Doesn't really have the, the weaponry to use either, so the protection, yeah, they'll pick it up. But what did they really accomplish off the back of it? Maybe some control towards heavy. Maybe you could drop down for a kill or two, but you can already see Rafa to hang immediately running away. That was a great shot out of Dehang to slow the progress from Latromi. But the rock jump in. He's looking for the kill on Rafa. The protection's gonna wear out, and it might allow Rafa to pick up the kill, but no. Latromi gets the better of him. 10 HP left, and Dehang will quickly turn that around with a rail. That's what it's all about in 2v2. If one of your teammates goes down, as long as you're ready to pick up the pieces, it doesn't necessarily always need to be a 1v1. Latromi looked really good. An impressive display of LG right there. But Dehang, even before the frag took place, he was positioned with that rail ready to Go. He's trying to prevent that heavy from being dropped. Uh, take a cooler drop, it's a little unfortunate for him. It's on the LG versus LG, and the healing to hang does have. And the backup from Rafa is able to get the kill. The rail's gonna miss, but Rafa, lucky for, for him, uh, luckily for to hang, has some rockets, but they're low on HP, just as you can see. It can be falling. so tempting sometimes to when you see a missed rail to try and punish. But if, it to, if it's a 2v1, I think you really still need to make sure you're taking out the person that's having you know, the higher fire rate. That's why he was focusing on Rafa. Even though Dehang missed those rails, he wasn't getting punished for it because you have someone dangerous right in front of you, you know? Oh, Rafa goes in. The suicide, but he gets the kill onto the Tromi. And the Tromi just got heavy too, so that really worked out for him. Gets the one for one trade when he's already low HP. That's the trade he's definitely going to take any day of the week. 20 seconds on quad. And this is going to be interesting. I actually wonder who's going to be able to get it because you can already see that Cooler's there. But he's by himself, but he's got a nail gun. Now, on that note, right before we see this quad damage, we are going to jump into Liquid's comms and find out how they're going to try and seize this power up. I'm on my way. Danger right on it. What the? She's 10 health. Uh, he took red, but he took a lot of damage okay. too. Think uh, portal. Okay, red, mega soon. I'm getting mega. Yeah, try bolts. Okay. Railed him for a hundred. All right, good, good, good. Red's um, at 25. I'm not gonna port. I'm gonna come to you, Nail. Okay. He's at tribal. Just wait it out. He's at tribal. He's weak, man. Okay, I'm going back to Mega. I'm at Mega. Good job. Seven. Drop, drop. I got you. Yep. Good job. Do you need, do you need? You, I can you, yours, yours, okay. yours, yours. Pfizer at rocket. Pass it for just a sec. Galena half at tri -bolt. Okay. Both. Red's next. One thing I really like about the Liquid guys um, when they give their comms is they kind of have these like uh, small little quick fire words like need, yours, you know, take, drop. Um, one word, you know, that, that's all. It, no, not complicated at all, basically, is what I'm trying to get at. And you can hear in the heat of the moment here, nothing is getting lost, and the communication is non-stop for these guys. Oh, cooler. Really good take out of Mega there, and actually the follow-up kill on Rafa. They're going to start to need some momentum, but, you know, to be fair, even though they haven't gotten the last power-up, they are, actually, they did get the last power-up, they're still keeping it within a two-frag lead, or a two-frag difference. I think it's going to turn that into a three now. It's still so close, considering how the first time they met in the group, AMD have really stepped up when it counts here in the semifinals. Rafa and Tahang pushing together to go for heavy. They will get this end transition potentially now, Rafa, over to Mega. They have the timing on it, but he wants to kill, and he gets oh the flick. God. The Tromi's going to fall, and Tahang will take Mega away. So that's Mega and Heavy on their side, and now a four frag lead. That would have sent to a lot of comms today, but we're going to do a little bit more. Here comes AMD before the protection spawns. Yeah, no, yes. Yes, Super Vizuche, bled. Yeah, I'm here. Armor is full, Mega too. Who am I going to kill? The Galena will kill. There's no tornado in here. That's. I think that's cooler, actually, breathing. I think that's maybe some frustration, actually. It, it, I was actually about to point that out. It, it very well could be. Uh, you can hear that there's very distinct differences in how these guys are communicating. And right as that happened, and right as there was minimal communication and a lot of heavy breathing, uh, the divide in frags has become a lot more significant. I wonder if it is a sign of frustration and if things are starting to slip away from AMD. 
Okay, B, I mean, they're down seven. This is like the biggest difference, discrepancy in this map so far. Trying to fight back and close it up to five, which they have been able to do. But again, like with only five frags, like that's a quad. That's that's 100% doable. If it's anywhere between like, you know, 10 plus, especially at this late stage of the map, then you're gonna start to get really get frustrated and feel like you can't come back. 50 seconds on quad. They're gonna have heavy. Most likely have heavy. You know, has been forced off this by Rafa. But he does actually pay the ultimate price and go down. It's the coordination that is required, you know, two LGs. We're starting to see very much a comeback here, by the way. Um, it, going for the heavy is normally a massive risk, but if Latromi is there, if Cool is saying they're gonna go for me, so make sure that while I'm LGing him, Latromi's going in there too and killing Rafa before he even has a chance to do anything, uh, it's a great strategy. And it kind of, it's a variation of 2v2 compared to some of the other modes on this map. I wonder if it's actually possible if, uh, if we're ready to potentially hop back into Liquid's calm here, because we're at such a late stage in the game, this quad could mean everything for Liquid, could put them on match point. Cooler trying to take heavy. Mega is about to spawn in. So they actually Cooler could be super stacked, but instead he goes for the fight. Mega was available. He takes down Rafa, which oh, actually wow. might work out in Rafa's favor. The Hank's gonna be by himself on the point. Trying to hold on to Stahank. It's one kill to Cooler. He's looking for the second to Latromi, and he might be able to finish it off because that's gonna be Rafa on the side to get it. And they could still transition this quad straight into Mega, but he wants to kill. He wants Cooler. He wants another frag on the board, and he's gonna get it. Making sure that you collect some of that armor as well. The maximum stack you can have super shotgun and super nail gun. Two of the most devastating weapons with this quad rampage. Going in for that snipe with the super shotgun. God, Latromi somehow surviving two blasts. Is he gonna get this one? How is he still alive? It took four shots to take him down. So Rafa doesn't get as much as he's hoping for off the quad, but either way, they're up four. This is definitely come down to a game of kills. And you can see how important it is to Rafa to hang. They're sticking together very close. Making sure that if one of them does die, they can get the return frag. The hang getting a little bit caught up. Look at that Rafa there immediately to help out. Cooler getting focused down. He's gonna follow Latromi. Trying to pick up the 1v1 now against Rafa. The totem has fallen from him. He's trying to prevent heavy at the same time. Trying to do so much work at one moment. And he might get the kill on the Rafa. Oh he does God. 20 HP left. The hang's gonna drop into Cooler. And Cooler's gonna get the kill onto him as well. Two frag difference, 11 minutes in. I feel like that must have been one of those exchanges where Rafa must have just been like, I've got it. You know, because that, that looked like that 1v1 was entirely in Rafa's favor, but some immaculate rocket placements from Latromi allowed him to not only survive, but then, you know, the 1v1 simultaneously happening. Uh, AMD coming off strong in that one. 64 HP. Cooler's going to need to heal up here. There, there's a chance we could get protection if both teams do slow the pace down quite a bit, which they might be going for, but Rafa pushes in to hang as well. They're focusing me onto Latromi for that first kill. They get it. They get oh, wow. a second as well. A two for zero exchange. And now AMD, they need to stop dying. They need to play for this protection, which is only 20 seconds away. Now this is definitely going to be crunch time for AMD. This isn't a match point, but it's going to be two maps to nothing if this follows through. They have a lot of work to do. It's possible. Uh, but Rafa with one more frag. <laughs> this is where things get the end. He could can't win this 2v1. I'm not entirely sure why he was still there, to be honest, because oh, no, it, it's so risky this late. There Trumby we go. goes in, 1v2. He tries to prevent the protection from being taken because they realized they would have lost if Liquid did get their hands on it. He almost got the second kill. Technically, he did in the end because his rocket killed Dehang, but Dehang's rocket got out right before he died. They killed Latrome off and get themselves that 50th kill. Now, map number three, uh, Blood Covenant. So, to be honest with you, how these guys have been approaching it so far, I wonder how significant this map's going to be. I feel like both of these teams are going to be really, really comfortable. That came down to, in my opinion, just the constant communication. And I think attitude, more than anything else, the intensity and the concentration, you know, from map one to map two, uh, Liquid's comms were unchanged, exactly the same. Whether they were behind or whether they were in front, it, it didn't really change the situation. Whereas we kind of took that listen into AMD and they weren't really talking. And I know it might just having, you know, the microphone a little bit too far up here maybe, um, or whether there was some heavy breathing that shows signs of maybe frustration, being annoyed at the situation, Two different clashes of styles, I think. I'm sorry, I just imagine the meme of the cat and the, 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 the caption of heavy breathing. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's all I, I imagine right there. I was wondering where that. you're going with that one. Except it's it's cooler as the cat now. Your Blood Covenant, this is going to be a tough uh, a tough battle for AMD. I mean, they, the thing is, it's 2-0, right? But it hasn't played out like a 2-0. It's been a very, very close 2-0 so far. But now Liquid realized we're one map away. They have two maps they could technically give up. So they have now three maps to play for for that grand final. And I think anything short of a victory in the entire tournament would actually disappoint Liquid. The, the problem they're going to be facing is that uh, in this situation when you're in tournament, when you're this late in the bracket, just to remind you guys at home, this is a $50,000 LAN. You're now in a situation where to survive in this tournament, you have no choice but to make 
three maps in a row, mm. first things first. You know, you have to make that consecutive constant stream of maps, which is hard to do on the best of days, least of all when you're two maps down and on the and verge of elimination. <laughs> and you're against Liquid, who yeah. are proven to be the strongest team currently in the world. When you go by previous results, we go by mm. the dream hacks of last year, Denver and Winter, um, both dual in, in DreamHack Winter. We to hang on the lineup of Liquid. This guy won Sacrifice and Duel at Winter. And this is the la this is the first land we've had since then. Yeah. What if Dehang can manage to take another title for himself? This makes Liquid look like the absolute uncontested top team in Quake Champions. Yeah, team to beat. And Dehang just right at the top of the list of great players. And if like they he's not there, of course he's there already. Yeah. And the thing is, like, you know, Quake Con's the next big tournament, and leading into that, having three tournament victories under your belt, or three, yeah, three tournament victories under your belt, that's got to be a, a good feeling going into the going into that tournament. Now we're going to be going into our what could be final map. Blood Covenant is seconds away from loading in between Team Liquid and AMD. We're looking at Cooler first. And we're going to see if they can get something going. Actually, in a bad situation, tries to pummel, gets a little bit of damage, so it's not going to be the end of the world for him. Um, but Rafa does pick up two to begin this map. So we're seeing the Vyze and the Galenas again. I mean, that's kind of what was expected here. Hang going to have Rockets finally. Be very i happy with that, to be honest, and I would imagine we could see like a little bit of a slower paced game on this map. I think Liquid are, are happy to play slower, happy to play faster, just to depend on what AMD does give them. I like the fact that Liquid, I mentioned this before, but they're ability to sort of download a playstyle and understand what they're coming up against. You know, they do their research, they study the VODs, uh, they watch online, and even at this event, if their opponents are playing on stream or off stream, they're right there, they're watching the entire thing, and they're taking notes, and they're chatting to each other about what they're going to be facing off against. It's a rough start, Rafa. If he can hit the shot, he can potentially take heavy up in five seconds. going to drop down towards nails. Latromi's going to be the only one there to defend against this, and all he has through the nail and the machine gun, he's going to get heavy in the nick of time, but he will be finished off here, so at least they get that going for them and stopped Liquid from potentially getting super stacked the patience on that rocket from Rafa. So many players would be tempted to just pull that rocket trigger instantly, but the best players in the world understand the trajectory of the jump and they wait for the landing. It takes an extra second, but you're gonna get more damage and it's more guaranteed rocket splash. Oof. All right, Cooler. All right, calm, calm down, down, son. I was about to say. 74 and three, we'll try me at one and four. Gonna get heavy. And they realize the importance of that as well. He stuck around for a little bit of time just to make sure they can secure that much needed item, even the Tromi set up over towards Megan because they realize that's going to be the next item coming up. Cooler comes flying in with the LG, gets the first kill. Doesn't have the distance to get towards the hang, but he's got the stack to chase. And they're actually going to lose out Mega, I think, I think because uh, the hang was there. No, the Tromi did pick it up and then did die. But this is why controlling this part of the power up room is so important. The Tromi does everything he can. I mean, he's a, almost like half a second late, I think, to the party for that one. Uh, was outputting a lot of damage, but Galena on this map is one of the many reasons that she's a top champion. You know, she's super top tier in 2v2 because she places a totem on one of the, the many areas that you have to go around, otherwise you're just going to get bullied all map. You have to fight for power up, or use the teleporter. If you don't, they're going to take it for free. If you die, they take it for free. Establishing early control is so vital on Blood Covenant. Look stacked Raph is too, off the back of the quad. Heavy and Mega for him. He's looking for another kill. This is going to actually Net Ouch. them a, a four or well, seven frag lead when AMD only have seven total. Rafa has more than again the entirety of AMD in this match. He's still maintaining that site most importantly. And they want to make sure to control Mega now because they already had heavy, they had Mega last time, and they're trying to push in, trying to prevent AMD from really getting back in the game. Problem is, Matromi on the high ground is left alone. He does get the kill into Rafa, but he has no HP remaining. I feel like when we were seeing AMD take a, a snail's pace approach to 2v2, and it was working wonders yesterday, and it was working today, um, it was almost like, to counteract that, you need to have the highest degree of confidence you know, to make those group pushes, to be coordinated, and I think be brave enough to kind of crack that armor, you know, that sort of fortification that AMD is putting up. That's a lot of damage done with the nail. Rafa already perfectly timed. Get there towards Mega, maybe trying to bait in someone to go for it. As you can see, he just delayed it. Doesn't need to go for it right away and potentially take extra damage. I think that's Latromi under him. And they might be able to cut them off. But the thing is, 25 seconds on protection. Mega's gonna be up right before it, heavy in three seconds. And imagine Liquid are not gonna go for Mega because they want to set up perfectly around the point. Cooler has oh fallen. God. I think Raphael just needs a suicide at this rate. He's got no HP. He will finally go down from Latromi. That's that was definitely what you call a 1v1, by the way. Rafa survived with 7 HP. Oh, no. One extra tick of the LG would have made Cooler win that fight, but this time Cooler does actually take the 1v1. 
That's a great rail by Latromi to give Fuller the kill. Latromi, he's actually on 53 HP. He's trying to spam away. He does get protection. And he tries to get over oh, towards no. Mega. He tries to rocket jump to get there. Now he's just trying to run away for his life. Mega will be just taken in front of his eyes. But he will be able to back up to Heavy and at least prevent Liquid from securing power up themselves. Uh, whilst that was unfortunate, he hasn't been punished for it. It's going to waste time. It means he can't be active in those fights. He can't be involved. But he lives to fight another day and he still has the protection. And when you're behind, even if you can't get frags, Team Liquid can't use this protection to further establish a bigger lead. I mean, they're already up seven, or sorry, six, like count right. They don't need to be up anymore in the eyes of AMD, and well, Rafa will make that happen. Can't pick up another kill. 16 for this man. Oh my god, he is on a tear right now. That's the nature of Visor on Blood Covenant, though. This is a map that fits this champion like a glove. That piercing sight being active for so long means you have so much vision. And it's a rail map. Visor likes rail, rail likes Blood Covenant. Visor, <laughs> likes, Blood Covenant. visor likes rail, rail likes Visor. <laughs> They're best friends. Yeah, I mean, that, that's true. That's true as well. I'm not going to deny that. Oh, Rafa in a bit of trouble right here. He has no rockets to defend with either, so has to try and pick those shots. Doesn't want to go down, you know. Play every life like it's like the absolute map depends on it. Don't give up a single frag. The level of care Rafa tried to take there when he understood he was one hit from death. Instead of trying to do as much damage as he can before he dies, he tried to survive and pick off rails along the way. There we go with Strongly. He's starting to get into the mix. Six and 11, but he's starting to look more confident. Ooh, that was a good uh, rail there, as well as his totem did 100 damage to, I believe it was the hang. Mega's up in six seconds. He's trying to push in. Cooler, unfortunately, gets rushed down, so they can't have the two on two. And Tromi's going to have to give this up. He's just looking for some exit damage when uh, Dehang picks it up, and he does get the 100, so pretty much eliminating that Mega health. But 16 seconds to go on quad. This is where things are going to be make or break. I feel like if Rafa gets quad again, he's going to go on such a tear. Oh my god, Tromi, he ran out of rockets. That is at the top of the list of worst times to run out, I think. He's going to try and sneak in there and get quad, but the rockets are going to knock him up far away to try and fight back for this power up. They're going to get another double kill to hang with the totem and a mega. And I feel like, is it going to be Rafa or to hang collecting this? We'll see. Yeah, to hang. Let's actually head into the comms to see how they use this bar. Shotgun and nail. Okay. Nail hit for 60. Visor LG now. Pillars. Galena weak bridge. She's dead, she's dead. I think he's still lower, Visor is. Okay. One's at a uh, nail, Visor. I'm gonna get another Mega. I'm past it for a sec. They're both, yeah, I'm just trying to get out. They're both bridge side. All right, 11 was Mega. I think heavy at the same time, so I we'll have to do decide. good damage on them. Nope, Mega, oh, 18, red was, yep. Okay. Railed Visor. Good job. I'm not dropping, I'm 50 health. Okay. Going back I'll, to I'll Mega. Fight for your Mega. LG! Gonna push up the pad. Ah, uh, I gotta back off. She's dead, she's dead, she's dead. Okay, I'm going back fast. I, I just love the shotgun! His shotgun! You can just hear, I think, for Rafa what it means to him to be cooler here on land. I mean, these guys, their, their rivalry, their competitive rivalry just goes back to the ages, really, doesn't it? So. Seeing as this is the first LAN of the year, and this is the premier 2v2 tournament, you know Rafa wants to have that, he wants to have that victory. Yeah. But it's also little things like, you know, nice job, good job. They actually care about making sure that morale is high too. Losing morale is such a, a team killer, I feel. And it just doesn't seem like Liquid has ever remotely had that problem, and both this tournament and other tournaments too. They're so close to actually getting through to the Grand Finals already. 32 to 20, 12 frag lead. Currently Rafa at 21 frags. He's playing out of his mind here. Protection come up in three. Then he gets the trade. Rafa comes in late. He gets the oh, knock the of Cooler combo. into the totem. He rocketed him into the totem. Get wrecked. He's trying to go for Mega. He's actually going to be finished off. Latromi gets the kill. Latromi gets protection. He's got his own totem. He's got Mega up too. So at least maybe they're his and Cooler's sake. He can make a play off of this. Latromi, he needs to make good things happen. And that's going to be a start. They're not miles behind. That's what we have to realize here is that they're, if they're not so far behind, the win is guaranteed for Liquid. Liquid still needs to give it 110% at all times. Hands on the steering wheel. Dehang does secure a frag, though, uh, just as the protection runs out. And Liquid have maintained a lead without power-up as well, so they're not going to be too worried about that. A long time until. I think they're going to be expecting Mega to go down. This is a 2v1, so where is Cooler? He's over there. Maybe the Mega's been taken. It's so rough, is that... Liquid have gotten every power up. 
and AMD have been unable to contest them uh, appropriately. Like the last one was was decent. Problem was Latrome got knocked into the totem and eventually eventually killed because of that. They need a power up. They need to get some control back, and it starts with getting this next quad in 50 seconds. Yeah, we see a lot of comeback start from the power up, and I think this is actually one of those super prominent. Uh, situation that was a fantastic mid air, by the way. Nice to see that Cooler is not going to be shy of hitting those amazing shots, and he almost flew off the map for it. Oh my word! <laughs> Raph, we're going to chase him. All right, me. <laughs> try to go for the pummel. So I might come to the teleporter, and he does. Totem wasn't put in time though, so it actually does not take too much damage from it, or any, I think. And Hank's now able to get the, te uh, the, the teleporter locked down with his own totem. Again, look, Liquid set up. They're prepared for it. They're trying to do some early chip damage. <clears throat> Mega's up in just a second. And oh. Rafa will be killed before he gets there. But there we go. The Hang secures it right in front of the eyes of the Tromi. He's got the thing is, he's got no real ammo, no real weapons to use. Rafa probably going to be the one to pick it up since he has rockets in a second. And it's going to spawn in five. Actually looks a little bit like the Tromi when he went up that jump pad for the Mega wasn't ready for Dehang because his back was turned right as he jumped up there. And the time it took from the turn around and return fire, too much damage had been dealt. Dehang now with a heavy machine gun. This is a scary weapon to deal with when quad damage is on the field. He's still got the 11 frags. And like I said, he's got the LG. He doesn't have a ton of ammo for it, but he doesn't oh. need that much. Much for him, Latromi gets a double kill. That was a big win for them. They're still down 10 though, so it's not like this quad alone are still in a way. He's gonna save their hopes here in this match. He's gonna need to get more kills. He's gonna need to turn this uh, with Cooler just to gain control back now. He's gonna get one frag. I'm not sure he's gonna have time for one more, but anything will do at this stage. Liquid just needs nine more frags and they will be in the grand finals. We've had such a close game every map so far. Oh, that's data. That's going to be data for Liquid. They would have called the totem going down. And I've got a feeling that it's going to result into a close finish here as well. Even with Liquid having a majority of the lead for most of the map. The Chumbi is going to be pushed by Dehang. Nice little jump from the Chumbi. Dodges that rocket, but Raph is going to be on the bottom. He's going to shoot that LG right up Main Street. It almost looked like that, that, that one kind of frag there where you feel like he got away and then Rafa somehow is right underneath. It's almost like Latromi was thinking, like, how was he there that fast? Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's kind of unfortunate because they, they need positive exchanges every time. And, and even then, they need exchanges where they just don't lose a person. Rafa is just using this pillar as his guardian angel. Cooler from the low ground, though, is going to get the kill with the RL, or sorry, the rail. And now it's only seven frags. Protection, 30 seconds. AMD have to slow the pace down quite a bit. They have to get this next power-up catch up, or they can say goodbye to the Grand Finals. I think that's why AMD are trying to set up shop here now. Um, we've seen consistently they could be the ones that are in this room around this time, and they use that control to always guarantee it. It has been difficult for AMD to crack into this iron defense of Team Liquid, and it just looks like it's going to keep repeating. They got two spawns underground. They're going to know that they've just spawned. They're only going to have LG. Cooler hasn't got anything else that he can fight with. He's going to have to pile in with the Tromi. They can do what they can. It's going to be 1-1, but because it's protection, Rafa is more than healthy. And this is danger territory for AMD. That's a bit to hang up against the Tromi in a 1-on-1. Rafa's going to drop down to get the kill. Puts him now three away from the Grand Finals. Need some help bubbles to push back in, and oh no, he's gonna find out Cooler, and Cooler's gonna die. That is not good for him. He's eventually gonna fall, and now two away, Rafa. He's looking for the finisher. He's looking for the combo. He's gonna chase with the rocket jump. A one more frag goes down because Dehang is lying in wait. The coordination between these two players has just been out of this world, and this is a, a bad spot. He's collected the mega, but now he's he's yeah, that that's it. He is way too weak to take a fight, and Team Liquid breeze into grand finals with a 3-0, but they had to fight on those first two maps. They, yeah, they 100% did, but I think Liquid could be so happy with that, with that result. All the hard work they've been putting in for the last well, forever, let's just say forever. I Since mean, they, the game was released, exactly, really, they've been playing together the whole exactly. time. Exactly, all that hard work really paying off for them, and now, I think, you know, even with those two maps being closed, they're still going to be seen as a favorite into the grand finals. Well, with all things said and done, huge props. AMD for getting as far as they did. These guys came to play, and even you know the AMD we saw, and I'm sure even Liquid will say, the AMD that they fought yesterday is nowhere near the AMD that they fought today. I think mm. these guys can leave with their heads held high. They're going to be disappointed they didn't get further because you know these two guys are both champions in their own right. You know, Latromi and Cooler across different quakes, these guys have reached the highest level of competition. So first place is always the goal, but they can leave this land now knowing they have what it takes to be world-class 2v2 players. And I think it also gives the option for maybe Kula and Latromi to sit down and think, is it possible for Latromi to go full-time professional gamer, or does he still need to continue to work? I mean, they had a good showing. 
They, I, they, I'd the hope Cooler so, was vocal because about, he won QuakeCon last year. <laughs> well, I know, and the Cooler was very vocal about, you know, not having enough time for them to prepare together as a team. They had 